as you know, Life Achievement Award. That's what this is all about. And each year, the organization presents a maximus of two awards to veterans of the entertainment industry with uh, those who have embellished Hollywood with multitudinous years of performance excellence. And tonight, we deify an artist who not only meets the criteria, but plays a good game of tennis to boot. Now, when you can say the word uh, multitudinous and tennis in the same sentence, you're doing all right. <laughs> Part of the old announcer's test we used to take. To present this man to our assembled membership here tonight, we've enlisted the talents of a lovely lady who, starting this season, will periodically retreat to the other side of the camera to showcase her directorial skills, too, and we're very happy about that. Whether this diverse actress is riding through the big valley and chaps on horseback or romping through Denver, Colorado in white furs, uh, it all, well, she can drive in her corniche, which she does, of course. She is equally glamorous, whatever she does, and she is wonderful. Co-star of the colossal hit Dynasty, a woman who should undoubtedly feel at home here in the crystal room, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Linda Evans. Linda. Thank you. It's a great honor and a pleasure to be here this evening to talk about my dear friend John Forsyth. And it did seem like a good idea, I mean anything, to get out of the attic. <laughs> to talk about John's career in the detail it deserves would take longer than he would like. And if I bore him, he might go back to Alexis, but uh, I hope he'll be patient. The list is impressive, and he may have forgotten some of it himself. John started acting on the radio, and then they discovered that the wonderful voice belong to the equally wonderful face, the eyes and hair we all know, to say nothing of the talent or the body. <laughs> he was one of the original members of the actor's studio, along with Marlon Brando, Montgomery Clift, Maureen Stapleton, Lee J. Cobb, and many others of our very best. His first Broadway appearance led to a movie contract with Warner Brothers and his Hollywood debut with Cary Grant in Destination Tokyo. During World War II, he enlisted in the Army Air Corps and was back in the theater in Moss Hart's all-service stage musical, Winged Victory. He went from there to Broadway, Yellow Jack, It Takes Two, All My Sons, and three years in the national company of Mr. Roberts. Theater goers who were lucky enough to see him in this and on Broadway in the Pulitzer Prize winning Tea House of the August Moon cherished the memory of a performance of great authority charm and wit. John's movie roles are as varied as his stage roles, showing again his versatility and range as an actor, from Robert Wise's Captive City to Hitchcock's Topaz and the Trouble with Harry, from In Cold Blood to his solid and touching performance in The Happy Ending, and as the corrupt judge in Injustice for All, a marked departure from his other roles in a performance that drew great attention and acclaim. These are just a few of his films, but we mustn't forget the one he wants to buy back and burn, Kitten with a Whip. <laughs> in television, John has participated in every area, from live television, Studio One, Craft Theater, Philco Playhouse, the golden age of television to numerous movies for television and narrating the documentary series World of Survival now in its 13th year. To this list must be added Bachelor Father, the long-running and successful series. <laughs> Not necessarily noted for the fact that it was in this that John gave me my first speaking role. There, <laughs> there could be days when he wishes he hadn't. <laughs> And of course, now we have Dynasty. Well, there's very little left unsaid in praise of John's participation in the series, except to mention that he sets a standard not only of acting, but also of conduct for the rest of the company. He is an example for us all of dignity, 
and kindness and excellence in his craft to which we all aspire. He has also given new meaning to the sex appeal of men with silver hair. <laughs> In 1980, John was given the Lee Strasberg Studio Award. The award itself is a bust of Strasberg, and on it are inscribed words that might sum up John's career. Honor these actors, for they are the abstracts in the brief chronicle of the time. And so, on behalf of the Hollywood Press, I present the Life Achievement Award to John Forsyth. man who makes us all very proud of our profession. <laughs> I can't tell you how pleased I am to be here and get away from the dynasty set in these 10 and 12 hour love scenes with Linda. <laughs> you know, not many people know this, but I almost didn't play that part. It had to do with Linda and money. I, uh, I haggled back and forth for, oh, it must have been two, three weeks with Aaron Spelling and his fellas. Back and forth, back and forth, and finally, I offered them enough money and they gave me the part. <laughs> I want to tell you, I'm a very lucky fellow. Not only in my private life, I have a lovely and devoted wife. I have lots of three fine, wonderful kids that I'm proud of. I've got my share of good friends. But I think I'm a very lucky fellow because I started out as a sports announcer some years ago. I did baseball play-by-play, -play, and as you undoubtedly know, that's a, that's a seasonal game. They only play that in the summertime. And I've I love eating in the wintertime. <laughs> I decided I'd take a crack at being an actor. And that's about the best thing that ever happened to me because I, I never regretted it. I've enjoyed every minute of it. And when I think of all the people who go to work every day hating their jobs, it uh, makes me feel even luckier. To be here in the company of extraordinary people, Mr. Roach and all these wonderful young actors. Barbara Stanwyck, who unfortunately can't be here. To be included with them in this is a tremendously flattering thing for me. And I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to the Hollywood Press Club. And thank you all for your kind reception. <laughs> <laughs>